Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a fully animated hero section to your Shopify store using GSAP. This section features a smooth background and product image transition that update in sync, giving your store a modern dynamic feel. I'll walk you through the entire setup step-by-step step so you can easily integrate it into your own Shopify theme. I'll go over a quick highlight of the HTML, CSS, and schema settings for this section, but then I'll take a little bit longer walking through the JavaScript code that utilizes the GSAP library to create this animation. As a reminder, the code for this Shopify section is linked in the description below, so feel free to copy and paste it right into your file. Let's jump right in. Now the first thing we're going to do is go into our code editor. So if you are using your admin like this, you can simply come into your duplicated theme and then go ahead and click edit code. And it's going to give you the same code and files. However, I'm going to be using my local code editor so that I can um, have this on my local server. So what we're going to do is first I am going to go into my code and under the sections directory, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this gsaphero.liquid. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste most of this code and just go over it very briefly so we can spend time focusing on the GSAP portion. Uh, the first thing I'll add is gonna be my styles. So I'll go ahead and paste this in. I won't go over it too much, but just suffice it to say that uh, this is what's gonna make it look okay. And you'll see we are referencing a few schema settings right here. That's what these brackets and things are. And then we have right here, this mobile um, media query so that we can make sure it looks good on mobile as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the HTML. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that right below. And then you'll see, same thing, you'll, the classes match up obviously to the styles. And then we're referencing a few of these schema settings as well. And then we have an SVG, which is gonna be a nice little animation to show an arrow on the button when we hover. And then we have our images right here. All right, and then um, lastly, not completely last, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and add our schema so we can have these schema settings ready. So right below I'm gonna paste that and you will see I have them all right here. And most importantly, if we look, I have this presets and this name. So this is what it's gonna show up in our theme editor. So if I save this file, and if I go back to my theme editor, I should now be able to go to add section. And here at the bottom, you're gonna see this GSAP hero. Okay, cool. So obviously it doesn't look great right now, but let's go ahead and do some customization here. So I go in, um, I'm just gonna leave this. I'm gonna make the subheading, um, a bit longer, so I'm just gonna paste it like three times. And then we can go ahead and get started uh, adding our data. So I'm gonna go ahead first, I'm gonna add this green sneaker. And then I'm gonna do blue. Oop, and it looks like I accidentally um, screwed this up. This should, I'm gonna remove this, so this shouldn't be in your code, but I think I left it over by mistake. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the green one because I believe that will not be included. Okay, cool. So I've got all three right here. And then, um, so it goes in order. So you can see image one, image two, image three, and then the gradient for each of those as well, right? So the one and one, start and end, two, two, three, three. So you're gonna select two colors for each one. So if I go ahead, um, so the first sneaker is blue actually. So I'll go ahead and I will select a blue color. And for the, I'll just do, yeah, I'll keep it black. Second sneaker is pink. So there we go. And then lastly, uh, green. Let's try that. Okay, cool. And then we can go ahead and add links. So I'm just gonna I don't really care, so I'm just gonna select some random links, but this would obviously wanna map to the products that you were trying to display here. All right, cool. So now we should have all the data that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save right here. And if I come back to my preview, oh, and I probably didn't add it to the right place. Let's, yep, yeah, so it's at the bottom. Let me drag it up to the very top, and then I'm gonna hide that. And so now it should show up at the top in our banner. Okay, perfect. So you can see that and it looks pretty good. Like this is, this is, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And you can see when we hover, it has this little arrow that shows up, which I like. If we check it out on mobile, um, yeah, it looks good. I like this. Very happy with this so far, but of course this is about adding GSAP and making it animated and um, kind of a beyond just looking good statically. 
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into our code and we're gonna add some GSAP. So the first thing we need to do is up at the top of this file, I'm gonna paste in a link and this link is gonna be what uh, imports the library for us. So up here, I will paste this, make sure you have this. And now what this is gonna do is make sure that we have all of the uh, library methods available to us. Now, right below our HTML, above our schema, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a, a script tag. So this is where we're going to add our uh, JavaScript and I'm gonna go ahead and add this uh, initial boilerplate code right here, document .add event listeners. So what this is doing is this is just gonna make sure our JavaScript waits until the page is loaded and then we wanna execute this. It's a timing thing. Sometimes the JavaScript can run before the document is ready and it messes things up. So this is just making sure that we are safe in that regard. Now there's a few things that we're gonna do first and we're gonna grab these elements right above us in our HTML so that we can make sure we're editing them correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the hero, this the entire section uh, as a whole. So first I will do that. You can see um, my cursor editor is trying to help me by grabbing more. I'm just going to go ahead and ignore it for a bit. And I'm going to grab all the images as well. So this will be a uh, hero image like that. So you can see I have the hero, the whole section, and then I have um, all of these images right here. And then I'm also going to grab the button because we are going to um, edit that button a little bit as well. So you can see right here, GSAP button maps to this, although it's an technically an A tag, but our, uh, our call to action button. Okay, now, right below that, we're gonna set up a data structure that's gonna make our lives easier, okay? So what that means is we're gonna basically add our schema data into this um, array so that when we're cycling through, it has all the data organized and it's nice and neat for us. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do from and then section settings color one and I think I wanna actually wrap it in, yeah, like this. Cursor's pretty smart, so it knows what to do. So you can see I have all three right here. So we have color one, color two, color three, color four, color five, and color six, okay. And if we look, we are wondering where we get those, it is from these right here. So you can see color one, color two, color three, color four. So as long as those map up, we are looking good. So now we have our gradients. So when we go through and we're updating things, this is gonna make our lives easier so we can set the background color the way we want it to be. And then one more thing we're gonna do is we are gonna add our links as well. So um, just like this, you can see I have our link one, our link two, and our link three to make sure we can add a link you know, for the button. Uh, if you have different product pages or whatever for that specific image, obviously we wanna link it to the correct image. Okay, so now uh, we can start actually using GSAP, okay? So it's gonna be very easy. The first thing we're gonna do is just set some initial values here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set um, the images to an opacity of zero. Opacity means it's not gonna be visible. It's basically hidden um, because we don't want all three images showing up, right? So uh, immediately after doing that, I am gonna set the first image like this, and that one I will set with an opacity of one, okay? So right here, just making sure our images are in a good spot. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually set a value for the hero section as a whole. So this hero is from right there. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the background and we're gonna do a linear gradient, okay? So we're gonna do, I think this looks right. Uh, linear gradient to right top, which is the direction we want it to go from the bottom left corner to the right top. And then we're gonna use color one, and then it's gonna go to, um, so this is not quite what I want. This needs to be slight. I mean, this actually would work, but when I had written this earlier, I did it a slightly different way where I have, I use our data structure instead. So instead I'm gonna do like this, this is JavaScript and I can go there we go so now what this is doing is it is grabbing the first element from here and it's just using the to and the from value I, the way it was probably would have worked actually but when I wrote this earlier that's just how I did it um, okay cool so now what we need to do is we also need to set 
that button to make sure it's uh, set to the uh, correct link. So what I can do is I can do this, and we're just gonna, again, referencing this, we're sending it to this first link right there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna create our timeline. If you're not familiar with that, that's okay. Uh, basically a timeline is just a way to set up like all of your animations to run in a single timeline to manage it. So we're gonna set this timeline, and we're gonna set a few defaults. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set repeat to minus one. Minus one just means it's gonna repeat infinitely. We don't want it to stop. If you always set this to just one, it means it would only run like repeat once. Um, but we don't want that, we want it to keep going. Um, I'm gonna do a repeat delay. I don't want it to pause at all, so I'm gonna specify that to be zero. And then for the defaults, um, for the actual animation style, I'm gonna make it, uh, I'm gonna make it the ease something called power to dot in out. Um, if you don't know what that means, it's okay. It's just kind of the way there's several different options of how the animation goes. Sometimes it goes fast and then slow or just evenly all the way out. This is just one of the many options there. Okay, so now we're gonna use a little bit of JavaScript here to make this, hopefully it doesn't get too complicated, but what we're gonna do is we are gonna go gradients dot for each, and then we're gonna grab each gradient and we're gonna grab the um, I, the index that we're on. And then we're gonna do a few things. First, because we're gonna be transitioning to the next color scheme every time, we wanna grab the next index so that we can easily um, get the next data that we need to change. So like, for example, if it's, if it's red and black, but we're gonna change it to green and black, I wanna have both colors available to use. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start using some of those methods from GSAP. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually run an empty animation. Uh, this might seem a little funky, but um, I'll talk about it hopefully in just a minute. And the general idea of running an empty one, and then what we do is we use the uh, on, start uh, on start method. And the reason we do that is so that we can have all of our code blocked and scoped together. So now I have this block started. All this is doing is just making sure that all of our code is scoped together. So what I can do is say gsap.2, and this is where I'm actually gonna start making some changes here. So the first thing is gonna be this linear gradient, right? So we wanna make sure that we're setting that background. Um, but what we wanna make sure we set it to is the next index of our, the next index so that it's not setting it to our current value, right? So the way, the way we do that is gonna be using some interpolation here and we're gonna go gradients, next index dot from and then dot to. So that's, we're, again, referencing this up here so we can make sure we're getting the next color. So we're updating it to the to the new color. We're also gonna make sure that we specify the duration of this. The duration I've chosen is 3.5 seconds. I think that has uh, looks pretty good, but you can always adjust these numbers if you would like. And then um, the power, the ease, we're gonna do the same power in out. All right, cool. And then we're gonna do another one. And this one is gonna be for the image. So the reason we're gonna start with the current image is because we want we want to make sure that that image is being hidden the same time that the next image is being set. So this in, this line right here is going to remove the current image because it's setting the opacity to zero, and this one is going to make the next image show up. And you can see its next index and the opacity is one. And then lastly, we just want to make sure that we open uh, excuse me update the button link. Um, and then one more thing I did forget is we also want to update the hero button just with some minor styles. Cool. And I am going to remove, I don't want to set the, the background, so I'm just going to leave it as this. So let's see. I'm setting the color of the text, and then I'm setting a border and the duration. Okay, cool. So I'm happy with all of that. And then lastly, uh, what I'm gonna do here is at the very bottom, I'm just gonna go ahead and do another and specify the duration. All right, 
So that's all we need. So I know that's a bit of a bit of JavaScript code, but hopefully it makes sense. And what we're going to do is save this file, and hopefully we can go back to our code. And if we open up our console, we should be able to check and make sure that there are no errors, and it should be working. OK, cool. So I can go ahead and see that this is animating the way I would hope. And if I do hover over, you can see it has this nice little effect with the arrow, and the arrow, and the text, and the border of the button are also um, getting updated to the new color. If we look at it on mobile, it also looks really sharp. Excellent. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this guide. And um, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, let me know in the comments. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.